All right, welcome gang. Uh, my name is Clay White. I am a chef out of Pinehurst, North Carolina. I'm known throughout North Carolina as Chef Clay. Uh, you can find me on chefclay.com. You can find me on Instagram, Chef Clay. You can find me on Facebook, Chef Clay One. I'm a private chef and caterer, and I've worked in restaurants through a lot of my career. I'm a big barbecue guy. I'm a wine guy. I'm a sommelier as well. Um, I do a lot of things with the uh, North Carolina Barbecue Society and the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Um, but I am classic French trained. I do the fine dining all the way down to the barbecue. A little bit of here and there in between. Basically, I'm a chef that just wants to cook great amazing food for you and show you how to do it and how easy it can be we're going to do several things we're going to show you how to cook great food we're going to show you how to buy the great the great ingredients fresh as you can get uh, so you can serve it fresh to the plate uh, we're all about fresh tasty simple good food um, so today what we're going to be working with you on We've got a grilled Caesar salad that we're gonna prepare for you. Uh, we're gonna make a jalapeno Caesar dressing to go along with that with some nice uh, croutons, a little shaved Parmesan. Then we're gonna move into a tenderloin. I'm gonna show you how to break down a beef tenderloin. It's not hard, people. I'm gonna show you, it's easy. Save you a little bit of money, impress your friends, make your own steaks. Um, it's a beautiful, easy thing. Then for sides today, I've got a rutabaga mash rutabaga have you ever heard of those it's an amazing vegetable um, i'm gonna show you how to prepare it one way i think you'll like it please go out and try it it's those big round waxy things you see in the grocery store that you've never known what to do with uh, i'm gonna show you what to do with them um, then for another side we're gonna do some harry covert french fancy word for green beans okay um, and then we're going to take some tomatoes some grape tomatoes pop those in there blister those up get them nice and charred we're going to put them all together on a plate a nice colorful plate some great food some great things that you can do bring over some friends cook for everybody show off your skills in the kitchen and we will be back and show you so much more we hope to visit you week to week and put some great food on your table we appreciate you. Check us out on chefquay.com. All right. So we're going to get started with our first recipe here today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is a grilled Caesar salad, and we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to do a jalapeno Caesar dressing with this thing today. Uh, first thing I want to do when I get started with this is I want to make some beautiful croutons. I've already got some done, but we're just going to go ahead, cut a couple more, just kind of show you what we're doing. Uh, anybody can do little square croutons, small little stuff. Uh, I like to do nice big croutons on my salads. Uh, tall presentation uh, so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna sit here cut a cut a baguette and I'm just gonna cut it on a bias nice and thin give me a long nice crouton uh, so we'll turn around I've already said I've already got some done up over here so we'll bring these over and what I want to do is I want to get a little olive oil on these things get them a little toasty and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop them on a grill back here behind us I'm just gonna brush this out so we've got a little little even coverage here all right all right and we'll fire this grill up there we go <clears throat> all right and you can take these croutons you don't have to grill them if you wanted to you can just pop them in a 350 400 degree oven somewhere in there keep an eye on them um, just make sure you don't burn them you don't want you know shards of bread glass in, in, your, in your mouth when you're uh, eating a salad so <clears throat> we'll take these we've got a little olive oil on them we'll go ahead and come over here to the grill and we'll just simply place them on the grill I've got a little bit of oil already on the grill and I'm probably only gonna use three but we'll go ahead and grill up several just to make sure that we've got plenty all right get those grilling up and then from here <clears throat> uh, like i said we're we're making a caesar salad which is typical made of romaine i've done this in, in the past uh, this, these are little artisan romaine lettuce heads that i like to use uh, i feel they they present a little better on the plate than just a, a handful of shredded up uh, romaine so what we're going to do here is i'm going to clean off any of the bottoms because the whole piece of lettuce is going to be presented on the plate 
and I'm just going to remove any of this rust right here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just simply take this and we're just going to cut it right down the middle. Okay, keeping that nice and pretty, get rid of any loose leaves that you have laying around. Uh, so we want this nice uh, flat cut side. This is what this is the side that we're going to grill here. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil, just dress that up. I'm going to brush that out as well. And we're just going to sprinkle it with just a little bit of salt and hit it with a little bit of fresh black pepper. Groovy. And then from here, we're just going to take this, we're going to pop this on a grill. You can do this outdoor grill, indoor grill, whatever you got. Um, I've even, in, in, a, in a pinch, taken a blowtorch and just torched it a, a little bit just to make it, you know, look. To, what we're looking for is the flavor more than anything. So we're going to take this over here to the grill, pop this on as well. We know we got something going on now. All right. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at those breadcrumbs, see what we've got going on. Make sure that they're getting a little toasty color on them. We don't want to get these too dark. We just want to get some good color on them. Uh, brown is great flavor. Black is burnt. So, and you know, in, in between, no good. So we're just going to get a little bit of brown on here, make them crunchy, give them some flavor. And I might even, while we're at it, I'm going to hit, hit those croutons with just a pinch of salt just a little bit wake them up all right okay so we've got our salad grilling we've got our croutons on the grill I'm gonna pop this right here in the fridge so the next thing we're gonna do here <clears throat> is we're gonna go ahead get the rest rest of the stuff ready for our salad so my Caesar salad is the grilled romaine that we have going on back here. Uh, to this, we're going to add some shaved Parmesan, which we have here. Um, then we're going to build a dressing to go over. And so we'll have some croutons, some nice par uh, shaved Parmesan on top, the tall croutons, uh, salad dressing. We'll go ahead and get that rolling. So we're going to need a nice bowl and a whisk. Now I'm just going to check on that. Caesar. I don't want that Caesar to, or the uh, lettuce to get too blackened. I just want some nice color. You got about one more minute. That will be done. So we'll go ahead and get working on uh, our salad dressing. Oh yeah. All right. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and gotten all of our ingredients ready. In kitchen industry, we call this mise en place. Everything in its place. So makes things a lot easier if you go ahead and get these things done ahead of time. So you're not scrambling, running back and forth to the fridge, back and forth to the grill. So my Caesar dressing is, uh, the base is gonna be just a good mayonnaise. Um, I'm from the South, so we uh, use a Southern mayonnaise. Y'all know the one I'm talking about. Um, it's got the yellow lid on it. All right, so I've got a cup of mayonnaise here. I'm just gonna get that in our bowl. I hear my lettuce behind me doing its thing. So it's probably ready to pull off. Let's double check on that real quick. There we are. All right, so we've got the lettuce. As you can see, it's got some nice color on it. We're not trying to cook this lettuce. All we wanna do is just get a little flavor on it. So the lettuce is done. All right, so we're gonna pull this off, let that chill. I'm gonna come back and get our croutons, save them. All right, so again, we're just trying to get some good color on these things. Uh, just kind of toasted slightly. So now we've got our croutons done. So we're gonna set those there. Hey, get back in there. Want those to cool down a little bit. Remember, salads are cold, you know, so we're gonna do, try to cool everything back down while we're making the dressing for this salad. Okay, so again, <clears throat> We have a cup of mayonnaise. To that, we are gonna add uh, about a teaspoon or so of uh, garlic. Um, I'd say a couple of cloves uh, would work. So a good te teaspoon. And this is just some crushed up garlic that I made earlier. Just take some olive oil, uh, some garlic cloves, throw it in a food processor, give it a whirl, and you got some good stuff happening. 
Next, we are going to add some Dijon. And again, this is probably right at a good heaping teaspoon. Um, and that's just gonna add some flavor to our dressing. Um, I've got some anchovy paste here. Uh, you can go use whole anchovies if you, if you can find nice white anchovies um, I prefer to use those but just for the sake of time we're gonna use just that anchovy paste then I'm gonna add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce all right this is the good stuff you pronounce it the way you want to I, that's that's the way I go all right so we've got all that stuff in here to this I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese and this is probably a good tablespoon or so of Parmesan cheese we're just gonna dump that on in there we're gonna come back last last ingredient uh, a couple tablespoons of fresh lemon juice please don't use the bottled stuff I promise you it's a little better we want fresh ingredients that's that's what my cooking is all about so I'm gonna add that lemon juice right in there all right so we're just gonna whisk this up until everything's incorporated nice and blended together and we have a nice dressing but we got one more ingredient that we're going to toss in here to make it just a little extra special all right so the dressings already come to come together nice and creamy you know we're just looking for a good uh consistency here good dressing consistency but again like i said we're going to make it a little different i'm going to add some jal fresh jalapeno to this dressing. Um, I'm a big fan of hot foods, uh, chilies, any hot sauces, anything like that. You'll find me doing stuff like this um, just to make it mine. <clears throat> so we're gonna cut these jalapenos, if you can see that. And easiest way to cut a jalapeno or any pepper is to take the cheeks off, okay? You don't have to sit here and make all these weird cuts. If you just cut just the cheeks off, Okay, now I've got four cheeks of my jalapeno. And there's all the seeds. That's that's most of your heat and the veins. Um, we'll go ahead and get rid of those. And all we're gonna do is just use the fresh uh, jalapenos. And I'm gonna mince these up really small, as small as I can. Um, we're just gonna, we just want them in there for flavor. And it also gives a little bite to the uh, dressing as well. So we're gonna come in here and just give these a little good mince. Now I need maybe a good tablespoon. Don't need a whole lot of heat in here. So we're just gonna add that in. Okay, probably don't need those. I'll go ahead and use what I've got cut up here. All right. Warning, don't go touching your eyes or do touch another sensitive places right after you've cut hot stuff. <clears throat> I know it sounds common sense, but I can tell you how many uh, cooks in my kitchen have made that mistake, rubbed their eyes right after cutting a hot pepper. Okay, and I'm just gonna mix this a little more just to get some of the juices and the oils from that pepper going into my dressing. All right, number one thing in the kitchens that people neglect, taste your food as it's going through, okay? You might need more seasoning. Maybe I need a little more lemon juice. Maybe I need some more anchovy. Um, that's one of the biggest things and that's one of the hardest things for people to to realize is i need to taste my food as it's as it's uh, progressing sure that tastes outstanding i'm gonna give it a little fresh pepper in there and our salad dressing is done okay now to build this salad very simple all right, we're gonna take our grilled romaine, place that there. All I'm gonna do is add, let's say three croutons. Odd numbers look better on a plate than even numbers. So I always try to keep things in threes, fives, sevens. Um, for some reason, it's just a little more appealing in the art world and in the food world as well. Also landscaping. So, all right, so we've got some Parmesan cheese here, some shaved Parmesan. All we're gonna do is uh, add our dressing to our salad. And if you have a squeeze bottle, you can put your dressing into a squeeze bottle. Come back, you know, this is a little chefy thing that we do, make everything look pretty, do some stripes and stuff across. But you can do something similar with the uh, just a simple spoon and just drizzle it. All right, so we're just gonna drizzle some of this on our nice grilled artisan romaine. And I always like to add a little dressing to the plate to fill in any white areas 
um, we, we just kind of want to bounce that whole dish up. All right, so then when I'm going to plate this up, I'm going to come back and I'll do some of our croutons. Like I said, I want to give this a little height here. So we'll stand those up, come back with some shaved Parmesan, and you can use, you know, whatever Parmesan you have available at your local stores. Uh, we just like to use shaved Parmesan, give you a little bigger bite, adds a little more salt to the dish as well. And then we're gonna top it off one more time. Got some microgreens that are brought from the restaurant. And we're just going to make this look pretty. This is just a chef's mix. Um, this has all different types of microgreens in here. There's some cilantro. There's some beet. That's where you see that red. And so then we're just going to place this on top. Make a nice little pretty tall salad. And from here, before I send this out, I'm going to clean that plate up. Make sure my rim's nice and pretty. And that right there is the Chef Clay Grilled Caesar Salad. All right, so we're going to get started with some other good stuff today. Um, I'm going to do a little garnish uh, to start off with that we're going to use on the plate when we get uh, everything wrapped up today. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to do some pickled onions. And this is just a very simple recipe. I like to use these as garnish. I like to throw them in salads from time to time, put some color on a plate. Um, it's very attractive. They're great to eat. I just, I make some keep them around the house just to snack on. I love anything pickles, dill pickles, pickled onions, pickled okra, you name it. Uh, I've already cut this onion in half and then in half again. So all we want to do is we want to get some really thin onions so they will soak up the pickling liquid, um, take on any flavor and it's, it's just a little easier when the uh, onions are a little thinner. So we're just gonna take it, hold your onions with your fingernails if you have any, if not just your fingertips, a good sharp knife. And we're just gonna slice these nice and paper thin, as thin as we can get them, okay? And that's what we're looking for. Just nice, thin onions to where you can almost see through them. I can actually see through that one, all right. So we'll take these. We'll grab our jar over here. And like I said, I've already got some in the jar. Uh, I like heat again. Um, so I've got a uh, Thai bird chili in here. They're one of the few higher uh, heat on the Scoville rain, uh, ratings. Um, and they're just, not only that, but it gives your, it gives your jar just a little, little color, a little something to look at besides just the onions. Okay, and I'm just using a good mason jar here or a ball jar, whichever one this is. Can't tell, it's got too many pickles in, or too many onions. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna go over to the stove now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pickling liquid together. So what I've got <clears throat> in my pot here, I've got some rice wine vinegar. I've got probably a good tablespoon and a half of uh, whole mustard seeds. And you can use yellow, white, black, whichever uh, is your preference. I've got about 10, 12 black peppercorns in here and one good bay leaf. If you can find fresh bay leaves, I would prefer to, uh, to do that. The dried ones just really don't have much flavor left in them. So if you can find that fresh, I'm all about fresh ingredients. That's that's, that's just a common thing, uh, theme in all my food. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna heat this up right here on the old stove top. All right, so we're gonna let that simmer for a minute. And all I'm doing here is I'm just warming this up. I don't have any salt in there, I remember. So I'm gonna put a good little pinch of salt. All right, and if you think my salt looks a little funny, this is just a mix of different salts that I use. I've got some, uh, some black Hawaiian salt in here. I've got some pink Himalayan salt. Uh, sometimes I'll make a sriracha salt, add a little heat in there. I just like to have a different blend of salts instead of just having plain old kosher salt. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this simmer, bring this up, and all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to soften those mustard seeds, I'm trying to soften those black pepper get the oils out of them so they actually add some flavor uh, to my pickled onions. And to this, you can add whatever you want. If you wanted to do onions and something else, um, I've pickled corn and onions before. That actually works out really great. You know, this isn't a canning process or anything like that. It's just very quick and easy. Take the pickles. We're gonna add that hot liquid in there. It's another reason we get it nice and hot. We want the onions to absorb 
what's going on um, with that. Uh, I've got a little bit of sugar here. So I'm gonna add some sugar to this just to sweeten it up, take some of that acidic bite out of this. Um, just helps. Uh, and that's probably a good tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons. So we're just gonna use that to sweeten it up a little bit. We're just gonna give it a good little stir, make sure everything gets incorporated, make sure that salt, make sure that sugar gets melted down. Um, and I don't need to bring this to a rolling boil. I just need to bring it to a good hard simmer, uh, just hot enough to where it's really gonna absorb into those onions. Pickled onions, I'll use these on all kinds of stuff. Um, so please feel free, check this uh, recipe out, um, give it a try. It'll become one of your favorites, I promise. So we've got our vinegar and spices going pretty good now. So I'm just gonna kill the old heat there. We're gonna bring this over here and being careful, we're just gonna add all this liquid straight into our onions, get that bay leaf in there. Come on, bay leaf, jump on into the game. There we go, all right. And I just want to cover these <clears throat> and just to make it look nice and pretty and the jar itself, I'm going to make sure that I get a lot of this mustard seed and black peppercorns in there as well. And we're just going to try to mush them down. There we go. Get mushed. All right. And this just looks better. Plus it looks cool when you go to get some pickles out and you get a little bit of ground must or mustard seed. And that uh, black peppercorn in there. All right, so we're gonna just mush it on down. Then I just got a simple lid. All I'm gonna do is put this lid on here, tighten this thing down, it's still screaming hot. I can feel it in my hands. Um, I got chef fingers so I can hold st hot stuff like that because pretty much all the feeling in my fingers are dead. So that's what our pickled uh, onions are gonna look like. And they look nice and pretty. And if you want to, you can take the bay leaf, show it down the side so it gives a little more presentation in the jar. Um, but that's our pickled onions right there. And from here, what we're gonna be working on today is a beef tenderloin. So I'm gonna be breaking out that beef tenderloin here in just a bit. But right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a demi-gloss to go with some steaks. Um, demi-gloss is a fantastic uh, sauce. It actually comes from one of the mother sauces, uh, the brown sauce. Um, there's several mother sauces that we'll, maybe we'll do a whole show on that one day. Um, but a brown sauce or a demi-gloss is the mix of a brown sauce and a reduced beef stock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> go get our uh, ingredients together for this. This right here is the demi-gloss. Again, it's a mixture of a brown sauce, which is a mother sauce, and then we've taken a beef stock and reduced it down to a quarter of, of what it originally was. So it's a nice thicker sauce, as you can see. Um, it's got a nice consistency to it, sticks to the back of a spoon. That's what you want your sauces to look like. This right here is great by itself. You can do this but we're gonna add a little, a little something extra to it. We're gonna, we're gonna saute up some mushrooms. Um, I've got some nice creminis here. We're gonna take a little shallot. So we'll start with a shallot. And what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna take a shallot, mince it down. So again, we're just looking for some nice thin slices. Um, there's a few different ways that you can cut shallots. When I was in culinary school, we were taught to do all these little cuts. This is a good little trick. Um, and then you come back, slice your shallot up, and then when you go to cut them here, you've already got some nice mint shallots, or you can cut off some of the rings like I've done here, and we can just run our knife through it, turn them 90 degrees, come back, give it a little more knife love. All right, and we've got the same, same thing. Either way. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a pan here. Just a good saute pan. Then we're gonna add, I'd say that much. We're gonna call that a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Um, so now we've got some shallots in the pan. We're just gonna leave that pan sitting right there. And we're gonna get rid of this. Clean up our shallots. All right, so then we're gonna take some of our mushrooms here. Okay, these are just good creminis. Uh, 
One thing I'll, I'll tell you about mushrooms, um, especially if you're gonna saute your mushrooms, don't wash these. They may have what looks like dirt on them. It's just a growing medium that mushrooms are grown in. They're all commercially grown. We're not out foraging for mushrooms anymore. Uh, well, some people do. Uh, you can leave the stems in if you want. I prefer to go ahead and pop the stems out. Um, that's just a habit of mine. You can do it however you want. So I've got some nice beautiful caps here and that's what I want in my sauce. So again, I'm just gonna take these and I'm just gonna cut them down to where they're a little thinner. So we just ride our knife through here. And you might hear me say this quite a bit, a sharp knife, sharp knife. Most dangerous thing in the kitchen is a dull knife. Sharp knife, if it cuts you, it'll give you a nice little clean nick. Uh, a dull knife, you're gonna have to put more pressure to cut through stuff. And guess what? When you're putting pressure down and then oop, little finger gets in the way, you might you might do some serious damage. So we always say sharp knife. Another one, a falling knife has no handle. Remember that one. That'll save you a finger. So we're just gonna come back through here. I'm not trying to perform any you know of our classic culinary cuts here. We're just gonna run a nice chop. All we want is some nice chunks in here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little olive oil in our pan. And you can use a non-stick pan. You can uh, use a stainless steel pan, e either one. Uh, stuff's really not gonna stick in here. Your ingredients aren't gonna stick because um, we're gonna get this super hot. We've got plenty of oil in here. We're gonna save these caps right there for something else a little later. And we're gonna go ahead Get our mushrooms into our pan. You want a decent amount of mushrooms because they're going to cook down. Mushrooms are just full of water. So we're going to get these cooking, get these cooked down. All right. So what we're gonna do here is, we're just gonna saute these mushrooms and these shallots down. Uh, again, we're just trying to get them nice and brown. We're trying to get some color on them. Um, not trying to do anything else, but just get a little color, let them release some of the oils, some of the natural juices that are in there. And that's gonna go into our demi-gloss um, that we have already going. We're gonna take a little wine, okay? Um, talk about wine for just a second. I'm into the wine world. I'm uh, not only my chef, I'm a, I'm a sommelier as well. Um, and wine has become a passion of mine. And I always tell people, if you're gonna cook with wine, cook with the wine you're gonna use, um, that you're gonna serve that night with dinner. Tonight I'm doing a beef tenderloin with this demi gloss. I'm gonna open up a great bottle of wine here and we're gonna use that in our sauce. Shallots and mushrooms are going over here, starting to sizzle when they start talking to me. I, I know that they're doing their work, so we're just gonna let those cook down. We're, we're gonna keep an eye on them, just to make sure that we don't burn them. We don't want anything burnt. We just want some good flavor, some good caramelization. Uh, so next thing, like I said, we're gonna open up a bottle of wine here. Now you, you can take, it, 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 my Samaye buddies would, would jump all over me for pulling the, uh, <laughs> the foil off like that but that's just the easy way to do it. We're gonna open this thing up. All right. That right there is a sign of good, some good wine. When that cork is dark purple like that, that's a good wine. This, this is vintage 2014. Um, hmm, let's go ahead and pour a glass. Oh, that's a beautiful color. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing we do at Chef Quay a lot is you sip on some wine while we're cooking. Might as well. When I'm grilling, I have a beer. When I'm inside cooking and I'm using wine, we'll have a little wine. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to taste that in our sauce. So we've got our sauce steadily going. All right. And again, we're just trying to get some good color on these mushrooms. We're not trying to burn them. We're not trying to cook them down to nothing. So I'm smelling some good flavors in here. And I always tell people, do this off the heat. We're gonna add alcohol to a hot pan and it's going to vaporize this alcohol. If you still have it over that heat, you might start a fire. So we're gonna always add our 
wine off the flame and then we can go back to the flame all right so here i'm just looking to deglaze this pan make sure i get all the crispy ghibli good bits off of the bottom all right reduce that wine down just a little bit take some of that alcohol burn um, that might still be in that wine take that out and then from here we're just simply going to combine the two and we are just going to incorporate that right into that demi-gloss that we've already prepared. All right. So now we've got a nice demi-gloss. This is now a mushroom red wine demi-gloss. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, all I'm going to do to this now to finish this off, I'm just going to add a little more heat to this thing. And what that's going to do, that's going to incorporate everything together, uh, heat everything back up. It's also going to, I'm going to let the sauce simmer and thicken a little bit, just a little bit more. Um, it's already where we could use it, uh, but I like it just a little thicker. It looks a little better on the plate and presentation uh, when we go to the plate. So that right there is our demi-gloss. We've got our pickled onions sitting over here steeping, getting ready for us. And from here, we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to break out some beef tenderloin for you. All right, so today we're gonna be talking beef tenderloin. This is one of those things that's a little scary, maybe a little intimidating uh, for the average home cook. Don't be intimidated. Don't be scared of this thing. Save yourself some money. Get the whole tenderloin. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do this. So we're gonna come over here to the fridge. All right, so this is our whole beef tenderloin. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out uh, one of my uh, boning knives and again, razor sharp. Nothing scarier than a dull knife in a kitchen. Um, so we're gonna take this knife out and we're gonna look at this tenderloin. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna dry it off a little bit just to make it easier to handle. Make sure I'm not slipping and sliding while we're doing this. Okay, now there's uh, a little confusion about um, beef tenderloins and loins that you see. Um, a beef tenderloin grows on the inside of an animal. Uh, a tenderloin grows on the back um, of the animal next to the spine. This right here is actually under the rib cage. So it's a muscle that does not get used. Um, it doesn't move and bend and, and walk while the animal's walking. So that's why this is so tender. That muscle just sits there. I'm not even sure what it really does, to be honest with you, it holds something together, I guess. Um, but this, that's why uh, beef tenderloin is so tender. Um, you can cut it with a spoon. Uh, it's, it's because that, that meat just does not get used. The rougher cuts of meats are, you know, of the animal are parts that get used, shoulders, you know, back legs, stuff like that. And those are things that you wanna braise down. This is one of these things where you want to cook it really quick. Um, and we do several things with this uh, in, in the restaurants. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and clean the top of this off. Um, as you, you can see here, let's, let's move our pickled onions out of the way. They're still working for us. All right, and our demi-gloss is finished. It, that's thickened up for us nice. So we're gonna be revisiting that here in just a bit. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean this tenderloin up and it's not that hard. It takes a little time, sure. Uh, again, uh, you wanna have a towel uh, handy to make sure that your knife stays uh, nice and firm grip in your hands. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get, we're gonna start pulling, you can just pull a lot of this fat off. Um, it's not really connected that well. So we can just take that, tear some of that off. All right, now, <clears throat> Any meat that you see that we're gonna tear off, um, and I'll explain this in just a second, but any of this meat, don't throw that away. Um, I'm gonna cut off 
save that little piece there take this fat now you can take this fat and render it down and make some nice tallow um, I was working at a restaurant for a while where I was making all of our um, pie crust out of, of beef tallow I would take the fat render it down we were hand cutting all of our steaks sirloins ribeyes uh, whole tenderloins and any fat we had we just freeze it hold on to it till we had enough render it down make some tallow and I would use that instead of lard or uh, Crisco or something like that uh, in our uh, flour. But <clears throat> for right now, I'm just gonna check out the trash and you can do the same. So we're just gonna come through here, clean this baby up. And one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the chain, okay? Uh, this is the chain. And I've, I've been to restaurants and I've seen uh, chefs that will leave this on here. They will just come in, clean this up, start cutting steaks out of it and leave the chain on there. Um, and that's fine if that's what you wanna do. In my restaurants um, and for all the private chef work and caterings that I do, I want, I want my stuff as pretty as I can because maybe I'm doing a surf and turf and I'm gonna add some nice big uh, round scallops, like some big U10 diver scallops and they're nice and round so i want my steak to look nice and round kind of match what i've got going on a little symmetry all right so the chain here <clears throat> it's all on this one side you can you can see this side is nice and clean this side right here has lots of fat and it has this chain in here now you can go in and cut this out with a knife but as you'll see it's not really connected to the tenderloin that well so you can actually just walk through and pull that chain off Depends on what you want to do here. Do you want to make ground up your own hamburgers at home? Why not? I do. Um, that chain right there, I'll take most of the fat off here and I will add this and this will be a little uh, tenderloin that I'm adding into my, I'll, I'll grind, grind up brisket, some of this chain, maybe a little, uh, I don't know, short rib uh, or chuck steak um, and make my own hamburgers. Uh, this right here does great to add some of the fat that you need to hold those burgers together. So <clears throat> you can hold on to this. Today, we're gonna let it go. All right, so now we've got the chain removed, then we've got a couple other things going on here. We have silver skin right here, okay, sinew. Um, if you've ever eaten sausage and you find something stuck in your teeth and you can't quite figure out what it is, it's not meat, it's not fat, it's this sinew, okay. Uh, <clears throat> this right here is um, basically connective tissue that helps hold muscles together um, and that's what this is doing. You've got to get rid of this. Um, I don't care how long you cook the meat, that is not going to go away. This is not. Basically, meat flavored rubber bands is how I can describe it. Because you can chew on that and chew on that and chew on that and it ain't going nowhere, I promise you. And you're not gonna cook it out. So we're gonna go, go ahead and remove that. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my knife up under there, point my blade slightly upwards at an angle a little bit and just let it ride along that sinew, okay? And you, you might cut a little meat off, no big deal. So I'm gonna come back here, do the same thing. All right, so that's all that silver skin, that sinew, we're gonna get rid of that. And we'll keep doing. Um, <clears throat> and we've got another piece here. And this is a nice piece that I like to use for another dish. We're just gonna cut this right out. You can almost see the line where, where to cut right through here. So we're just gonna cut that puppy out. All right, so now we've got that out of our way. This right here is another great piece of meat that's off the tenderloin. Um, I will actually take this, trim all the fat off of this, uh, put a little, um, I don't know, maybe a Cajun spice or something on it, sear this thing off in a really hot, screaming hot pan, five, 600 degrees, 700 degree pan, sear it off real good, just roll it, constantly get a good sear on the outside, take it, wrap it up in some plastic wrap, twist the ends off and make a nice cylinder out of this. Okay, then I'll slice it up nice and thin. Once it's, I'll take it, pop it in the freezer, let it set, get it to where I can slice it, paper thin, beef carpaccio, bam. That's the easiest way to do it. Anywhere that we can save you money, that's, that's what we like to do. We also like to give you nice fresh ingredients. You know, this, beef tenderloin was not frozen um, I got this it was fresh right out of the store I try to use fresh stuff anywhere I can and anywhere I can help you save money we're gonna do that so we're just gonna keep cleaning up 
get all these big there's big chunks of fat in here that we just want to get rid of that you know fat is flavor but with the tenderloin the tenderloins is the flavor piece off here all right so again beef stew stroganoff all kinds of stuff um beef stir fries uh you name it um i, I do a lot of asian korean uh japanese style cooking um stir fries th th that cut of meat right there is beautiful in any kind of beef stir fry um, even if it's calling for you know sirloin ribeyes whatever break that out use it all we're doing is just taking those fat chunks off and just kind of roll the thing around and you'll see big chunks you don't have to get it all taken off i'll leave some on again fats flavor so i'll leave a little bit on there just for me um but when i'm doing jobs catering jobs private work working in restaurants i try to get these as clean as i can get them so all right so that's pretty much what we're looking for here and again this is going to save you money if you're buying this whole muscle and don't be scared to buy this process this cut it up yourself save a little extra money the butcher's going to charge you to cut this thing up i'm showing you how to do it do it at home it's easy all right so we've got two ends here that come down to points and all we're going to do is we're going to take these off and again what we're looking for is the chateaubriand uh, i'm sure some of y'all have heard that fancy french name um, all that means is just the center of this muscle and that's where we're going to get our nice steaks from so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to go to where i feel like i can get a whole steak out of so we're going to move move here we're just going to come through slice that end off we're going to do the same to the other end come here about right there slice that end off um, and there's little tricks that we've done in restaurants um, before where you can take this maybe do a petite fillet clean this up a little bit all right instead of just having that what i'll do is i will cut halfway to three quarters of the way through that little piece okay and then i can fold this out and make a nice thin steak okay um instead of the the big thick ones that we're getting ready to cut or you can just simply take this again use it for all different kinds of stuff stir fries stews all that kind of goodness all right so we've got our filet here we're going to trim a little more off of that okay so now we're going to start cutting individual steaks out of here and this is easy okay it's what you're looking for is about a six ounce portion um i have figured out in my body that from my second knuckle down to the tip of my finger um, usually gives me about a six ounce portion off a, a whole tenderloin so i'm just going to come in here and there's my first fillet and as you see i've got a little bit of fat still left on here that's fine all right and we'll just make a nice little steak there come in here now as i get thicker into the wider parts i'm going to scale back off of my, that fingertip trick trim this one up a little more all right so now we've got fillets coming out okay and you can take these just throw them on the grill we're gonna keep cutting and notice I'm, I'm, I'm not cutting them as thick because this is a thicker part here so I'm just gonna go a little bit thinner and I promise you these are all about six ounces the biggest thing in, in doing steaks is I don't want to send out you know maybe I've got a, a, a table of two or a table of four I don't want to send out four different size steaks you know I don't want to send one out that skinny and then one really big one I want these all to be uniform so that's what we're looking for and most of the time in the restaurants we'll weigh these out Looks like I'm gonna get two more. All right, so we got two, four, six, eight. Bam, that's usually what you get out of a whole tenderloin. Um, again, you can come in here, get you a ninth one right there. So, all right, so that's our beef tenderloin. We've cut this all up. Now I can just take these, individually wrap them, pop them in the fridge, come back and visit them later on. You don't have to be scared of a beef tenderloin. It's, it's easy, saves you some money, and it's just fun to do. It's nice to know that you've hand cut your own steaks so go home try this 
go get you a whole beef tenderloin, check it out. Make sure you got a sharp knife. Make sure you got a, a towel on hand. And we're gonna cook up some steaks. All right, gang. We're gonna go on to some side dishes now. Um, I'm gonna do some stuff that maybe a lot of you hadn't heard about. A little veggie that we call a rutabaga. All right. Um, I've already peeled this one. I wish I'd have left it alone. Uh, this is one of those big softball size looking veggies you see in the grocery store and it's got a coat of wax on it and you're not real sure what it is, what to do with it. Um, I'm going to show you a little something to do with them. We're just going to make a simple rutabaga mash with these. Uh, I've already got some cut up here. I wanted to save one for you just so you can see how tough this sucker is this thing is I mean it's right it's, it's almost gonna be like cutting through a softball first thing you want to do when you're cutting a rutabaga sharp knife again remember that and keep these fingers out of the way these things have a tendency to slip around on you um, because they are so sharp if you've got a big meat cleaver BAM take it in half get her done what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this sucker in half and then from here I've still got a little wax here on the end so I'm just gonna cut that off a little bit on this side, cut that off. You just want to get rid of any of that wax. Um, that's no good. And then from here, I'm going to cut these into manageable size pieces. We would call this a large dice uh, in the culinary world. So we'll cut them up. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to get some small pieces because what we're going to do is we're going to boil these. Okay, so I want uniform pieces so they all cook about the same time. So I'm gonna take these right here. We're gonna put these in some salted water, bring them up to a boil. We'll go ahead and get our water going. And anytime we say add salt to your water, you wanna make that water taste like the ocean. Uh, you want it nice and salty. So I'm probably gonna put, oh gosh, a good, I don't know, quarter cup. I say, and this salt, we'll go ahead and get that rolling. <clears throat> okay, then from here, all we're gonna do, we're just gonna add <clears throat> this super hard rutabaga into that water. It's probably gonna take a good 15 minutes. Again, these are really dense, really hard vegetables. So we're gonna get these into that water, make sure that they get nice and soft so we can mash these up. And then we're gonna add some goodness to them once we get them going. Add all that to the pot, get that out of the way. So now we're just gonna let that come to a boil. Since I've got this ham hock, this is just a smoked ham hock. We're gonna add some more flavor to those rutabagas and we're just gonna add a little bit of that ham hock over here. Get that in there, push that down a little bit, make sure that that's adding some flavor. And that's just gonna add some of that smokiness from the ham, some of the juice from the ham. It's gonna create kind of like a ham stock in, in there. It's gonna add a little fat to the uh, water as well. Okay, so next thing we're gonna work on, some Harry Covers. Um, Harry Covers are basically French green beans. Um, it's just a fancy word. I, I, I really think it's just so they can charge you more, um, simply. But uh, they're a French green bean. They've already been trimmed up on the ends. Um, the long strings have been pulled, all the tips are off. We are going to shock these things in some boiling water. Again, we're gonna add some salt. Good quarter cup of salt or so. Okay, so we're gonna get this on the, on the stove top. And all we're gonna do here move our demi-gloss out of the way we'll get back to that we're gonna get that water up to a boil um, and what, basically what we're doing when we blanch something is we're gonna shock these green beans and you'll see if, if you can see the color of these if the camera's picking it up you know they're not that pretty they're, they're kind of they're kind of pale um, they're not bright and vibrant looking um, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna change that we're gonna make these nice and bright green uh, so they look a little more attractive on the plate we got to remember we're gonna cook these twice so what we're gonna do 
after we blanch them, we're gonna shock them in cold water, ice water works best. That stops them from cooking immediately. Stops them right there where they're nice, bright, vibrant green. And then we're gonna let them cool down and then we're gonna saute these. So the dish I'm doing here for you today is we're gonna have these green, or the hairy couverts with a blistered tomato. I just think that the adding the addition of a little char to the tomato adds some flavor, softens tomatoes up a little bit. Um, and this is something that you could do with broccolini. You could do this with um, hairy couverts, uh, just about anything. I, I just like to add, for one, add the red and the green, give it some color, it's a little pop on the plate. A little different from just throwing something green down on the plate. You'll take the uh, tomatoes, we're gonna pop them in that pan, a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna let those things blister, get a little salt and pepper in there, season them up. Then we're gonna take our green beans that we have blanched. Once we've got them nice and pretty, uh, we'll take those, pop those in the pan. Same thing, a little oil, a little salt and pepper. We're gonna toss those around a little bit and that'll complete this dish. Um, it'll look nice and pretty. Uh, when we pull all this together, um, we're gonna have our grilled tenderloins, we're gonna have some nice rutabaga mash, and we're gonna have these right here on the plate. Give it some pop, give it some color, and it'll pull the whole thing together. Um, that was one thing my grandmother was always, always on me about, is it, when you plated food, you needed to have color on a plate. You know, if you take a, a steak, grill a steak, now it's brown, um, you throw some mashed potatoes on there that are just white, then you throw, <clears throat> you know, whatever else, uh, maybe it's just some green beans. The plate just has a tendency to just say, Get, give me something else, give me something more. I would, you know, in, in the culinary world, we always say, you eat with your eyes first, then you smell the food, then you taste the food, and that completes the experience. Um, but we're just gonna temp it real quick, see how close we are, just for time's sake. Yeah, so I'm up to about 150 degrees, 160 degrees. I'd like for it to go a little bit uh, further than that. I think we're ready. We can go ahead and pop these in here. Our rutabagas are already starting to boil. Let's get a spoon in there. And we'll use some tongs. We'll just kind of mix that up. Yeah, they're boiling all right. They're getting ready to start to a, a nice, heavy rolling boil. And we'll just come over here, put a spoon across there. Keep that from overflowing just in case I lose track of that, which, which does happen. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, our, our water should be hot enough so we can go ahead and, and get our hairy couverts in here. And you'll watch uh, as I pull these back out the color difference. And we'll just drop that handful of hairy couverts right in that pot of water. And we're just going to move them around a little bit. Remember, we're not trying to cook these. We're gonna cook them again later. So we want to leave these al dente where they still have a little bite to them. Get us a little disc, pull these out. All right, so just this flame over here. We're at a rapid boil on the rutabagas. Probably could have gotten that water a little bit hotter, but <clears throat> we've got what we need here. And also when we saute these, it's gonna brighten them up a little more as well, so. You always got a couple that are trying to run away. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we pulled them out of the boiling water. We've got them brightened up. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shock them a little bit with some cold water to stop the cooking process. I don't want them to cook um, and get mushy. Uh, again, we're gonna saute these and make them a little better. A little more good as my good friend says. You can get this out of the way. We're gonna pull this whole thing together. Um, we've got our rutabagas that are still over here going in this pot. <clears throat> They're just simmering away. Um, they should be about fork tender. And that basically, that's how you check something like this. You're just gonna take a fork, stab it through. If the fork slides all the way through, you're ready to go. So they're about ready to mash up. We've got our demi-gloss over here that's all ready. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take our steaks, get these things ready. Um, all we're gonna do with this you know, <clears throat> there's a thousand rubs out there, steak rubs and pork rubs and this and that. Um, I'm a salt and pepper guy. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead and take our rutabagas, we're gonna pull these off. We've got that ham hock that we had in there to add a little flavor. So we're gonna take that out. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna come over here. 
with our rutabagas. And the first thing we're gonna do is just drain this excess water off. All right, so from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little butter in here just to help make this a little creamier. I'm probably gonna add a tablespoon. Let's go, let's go two tablespoons. Sounds better to me. And I've got some sugar here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little sugar just to kind of sweeten them up, give them some more flavor, a little more complexity. And then on top of that, not only am I gonna add some sugar, I'm gonna add some hot pepper vinegar. Okay, this is just simply Tabasco peppers in white vinegar. Um, and we're just gonna add some of that in there. And that's gonna brighten it up. So we, now we've got a little sweet, a little heat, and a little sour from the vinegar. Then some creaminess from the butter, okay? My improvised masher here, just a good heavy sturdy whisk. And we're gonna come in and we're just gonna mash these up. And this does not have to be creamed. If you want to, you can throw these in a food processor and kind of cream them out a little bit. Um, I don't like that. I, even with my mashed potatoes, I prefer to have some nice chunks in there. Um, and I'm gonna do that same way here. We're just gonna mash them up, nice rough mash. So we're just gonna mash. And this is the same way I do mashed potatoes. Um, I'll take Yukon Golds, cook them down, skin on, everything. All right, so we've got these good and mashed up right about where I like them. Nice and chunky, as you can see. I'm not going for creamy. I'm not going for smooth, anything like that. I'm going for rough texture. All right, so our rutabagas are done. What did I say earlier? We're gonna taste, we're gonna taste it. Make sure that we've got everything seasoned just right. You don't wanna send food out and, and not know what it tastes like, right? Mm-hmm. That's why I do that because I now know this needs a little pinch of salt, a little black pepper, and stir that in. <clears throat> and now these will be right. Remember that, folks. Taste your food. Okay, so the rutabagas are done. That's all we had to do. Boil them off, add a little flavor to them. Now they're ready to go. Uh, so we'll set these aside back on the stove, keep them warm. Okay, we've already got our grill being preheated. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little olive oil to that grill. And that's just a, a stainless or a, a cast iron griddle. I'm gonna take these steaks, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of olive oil. So that, that'll help give us a good sear on here. Plus that's gonna help my salt stick. Now be generous with the salt, uh, cause half of it's gonna come off when you're grilling. So we're gonna be a little generous, add that there. Come back with a little cracked pepper. And again, if you wanna throw some paprika in here, some garlic, whatever. Whatever you want, whatever tickles your fancy. You wanna throw some fresh thyme on there? Sure. <clears throat> Matter of fact, we guess we're gonna we're gonna play with a little thyme here in just a minute. All right. So, salt and pepper both sides. Give them both some love, a little salt, a little pepper. And I said, go, go, go generous on that. Uh, half of that uh, seasoning is gonna fall off. So <clears throat> one thing I do wanna point out, if you'll notice, these steaks have been sitting out for a little bit. Um, just a pro tip, uh, when you're ready to cook uh, meats, uh, big thick pork chops, big steaks, even chicken, take it out of the refrigerator, let it sit out for a little bit, come up to room temperature. Um, if you do that, you will get a better cook on your meats. Um, the outside and throughout the whole steak is the same temperature. So when you grill this thing, we're not gonna grill it. I, I'm a medium rare guy, so just remember that. I'm not gonna grill this thing till it's gray all the way through the middle. I wanna still see some nice red running through the middle of these steaks. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna throw them on that grill. They're not ice cold in the middle. Um, so they're gonna cook nice and even. <clears throat> There's another trick we use, sous vide, uh, if you've ever heard of that. Um, I do use that quite often, um, but we'll get into that another show. Sure, sure. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these steaks on. As you can see, I've got my grill griddle over here, steaming hot. 
we got smoke coming off of this thing that's when you know it's hot ready to go the next thing that's gonna tell me is when I drop these steaks on the steaks are gonna start singing to me all right so I'm gonna take these round steaks and I'm gonna make them a little oval shape and I'll show you why here in just a second uh, we're gonna put some try to put some cross hatches on here quadrillage is the fancy French term but all we're gonna do is we're gonna set these at a 45 degree angle across the grill uh, grates okay so I'm giving myself this slight oval dropping my steaks on okay now they're rolling from here all we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna go ahead and get a saute pan warming up so we can go ahead and get the hairy covers and the tomatoes going because we're going to put all this together pretty quickly once it starts going these steaks are going to take about four minutes per side i'm going to cook them for about two minutes um, at a, a 45 degree angle so i'm going to have them on my grill grates at 45 then i'm going to come back and turn them 90 degrees at another 45 angle then we're going to flip them and do the exact same thing all right so remember if, especially if you're cooking eight nine ten steaks at a time remember the order that you put those steaks down if you put one steak down and then it took a minute to get the ninth steak down well that first steak has already cooked one minute the ninth steak just started so you got to remember that timing in your head and just keep track of that as you're going along all right we got we've got some decent grill marks on here it's not doing the best job that i want but you're going to get and this it, that's fine because we're going to get a more even sear this way so i'm gonna pull those off and like i said i'm gonna come back and turn them 90 degrees and i'm gonna give them a little pat to make sure they're sticking to the or getting good contact with that griddle grate i'm gonna do the same thing here we're just going to turn it 90 degrees and we'll let those go for a minute or so and as they're cooking, we're going to give our, let's see, give our demi glace a quick little stir. Make sure we're still good and tasty over here. Oh, yeah. Looking nice. And I'm going to steal a little heat from that griddle pan just to keep my rutabagas warm. Why not? That's uh, less gas and one less burner I got to use. So, got the demi glace rolling. We've got our steaks going. Rutabaga is nice and warm. So here we go. We're going to go ahead with the hairy covers and the tomatoes. And all I'm going to do in here is put a nice little splash of olive oil. We're going to grab our tomatoes. Again, I've got seven tomatoes here. Uh, odd numbers look better on a plate. Uh, it's, it's just, it's an artistic thing. So I'm going to get the, get that olive oil nice and hot. Let's go ahead and add some more heat to it. Get some fire going. All right, so it's about time to come back, check these steaks out, make sure that our steaks are going nice. So, yeah, we're getting more of a sear than we are, the uh, quadrillage. We'll do another show on that, show that exactly how we get nice, pretty competition style, restaurant style grill marks. We're going to go ahead and turn those steaks, and we're going to do the same process. Uh, flip them another two minutes, then we'll pull those off, and then we're going to let them rest. All right, so what I'm looking for is when I drop these tomatoes in here, I want to hear some sizzle. I, I want to hear that we're hot enough. There we go. There we go. I want to know that we're hot enough to get these things to kind of blister and crack open for us. We'll go ahead and get our green beans over here. We're ready for them in just a minute. <clears throat> All right, so we got about one more minute on those. Our tomatoes are getting blistered. And if you can see that, <clears throat> we're just getting a good char on these. Gonna let them crack open a little bit. And it's just gonna add flavor to these tomatoes. So we're gonna go back here. They're ready to go. We're gonna drop our hairy covers right there in the pan. Then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do a little salt and pepper. Give them some goodness. Make them taste awesome. That's all salt and pepper do. It just brings out the natural flavors of everything. So we'll hit that with a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit more salt, but ba bang. Set that over there. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna give these a little toss. Okay. So our steaks are ready to come out. 
So we're gonna pull these out and we're just gonna let these rest. We're gonna let this sit there. We're gonna let the juices spread back out throughout the meat fibers, get everything nice and pretty. So when we cut that steak open, it just doesn't bleed all out on us. Uh, <clears throat> and they're still cooking. They're still gonna go another four, five, six minutes or so. They're still cooking. All right, our hairy covers are done. <clears throat> We got our rutabagas done. We've got that demi-gloss warmed back up. So what do we got left to do? Put this all on a plate, make it look pretty, make it taste good, and send it out to our guest. All right, so we've gone through everything today. We've prepared a great meal for you. We'll show you how to break down a tenderloin. Now we're gonna put this thing together. Um, and this is the this is the easy part, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, there's a certain way I like to build plates, um, and you can do this however you want. Uh, we try to focus the food in a certain area and leave a little space on the plate. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start with the rutabaga mash. I'm gonna get a good scoop of that. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna get some of that rutabaga and we're just gonna put it right in the center of the plate. However you wanna do it, whatever works for you, whatever you think looks pretty for you and your friends, that's what you go with, okay? So I'm gonna come back over here. We're gonna grab our green beans and those nice blistered charred tomatoes. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna grab one of these steaks, all right? And I like to lay the steak right on top of my mash, whatever it is, whatever my starch is usually, I'll lay the steaks right there. Then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna finish the plate off with some of those beautiful hairy covers. Make sure we get some of these blistered tomatoes in there. All right, now we're almost there. Still got a couple more things going on. So we're gonna come back over to our demi-gloss. And this is that beautiful red wine. <clears throat> Got a Cabernet Sauvignon in here, beautiful red wine, nice cremini mushrooms in here. And I'm just gonna give the plate a nice little saucing. Drop a little bit over the steak if you want. Make sure we get plenty of those nice mushrooms in there. Make everything look nice and pretty. Make sure we got plenty of sauce. Everybody loves the sauce. So I'll put that back. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my clean towel. I'm gonna clean up the rim. Make sure that my edges of my plate are nice and clean. Okay, then <clears throat> just a doctored up. And this is just a garnish thing. It's just one of those things that, little things that just make food pop a little better. I'm gonna throw a couple of uh, thyme sprigs on top of that. And if you wanted to, you know, I've got some microgreens. We could come back with some microgreens, but I think the thyme is just gonna do it just pretty for us. We used the uh, microgreens on the salad earlier. So this right here is how we cook filets Chef Clay's way. So we've got our beautiful sauteed green beans that we blanched first, give them some nice color. We've got the blistered tomatoes. We've got the rutabagas. We've got a beautiful medium rare steak, nice demi-gloss. And that right there is just a beautiful, fantastic meal that you now have all the tools needed to cook that for you and your family. And go out there and have some fun. Enjoy food, that's what I do. We have fun. So there we go.